to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. And I want to tell you today, I just feel the sense the joy of the Lord in my heart. So much so that I've been obnoxious to people. I went down and did my, my Ocean Sunrise Catechism, which you can watch every morning on Facebook Live if you go go if you follow Bear Wozniak. And we uh I just I just sense that peace that passes understanding. You know, uh, in Philippians it says, May the God of peace rule in your hearts. And then, like, a few verses down below, it says, it doesn't say, may the God of peace rule in your hearts. It says, may the peace of God rule in your hearts. And peace is, a, peace is something unique, uh, the peace that passes understanding. When Jesus said, my peace, I give you my peace, I, I leave with you, and he, he alohad his spirit. He breathed his spirit on his disciples. There's a peace that comes after a great wars is won. And there's a piece like what happened last night when my desk just seemed to be in disarray and I worked for two hours just bringing order into my desk. There's a piece that comes from order. There's a piece that comes from a great victory. And we have both of those things in Christ. And then there's something the world really doesn't understand, and that's the peace that passes all understanding. That's the infusion of God's grace that you can experience. And you, and you do that. Of course, God can do that whenever he feels like it. But you can make yourself available for that moment. It's like there can be big surf, but if you never paddle out, you know, you're not going to get to ride waves. So um, presenting yourself to the Lord in the Eucharistic adoration or praying what I love to do, the Liturgy of the Hours, Lectio Divina with the Catechism, just presenting yourself to the Lord, uh, you will find at times uh, this sustaining peace that passes understanding. If you want the peace of God to rule in your heart, you first need to have the God of, the God of peace rule in your heart. We have our guest today uh, with us, um, Deacon Ralph Poyo, who uh, he's just a tough. He's he's a he's a gritty looking guy. He's if you want to check him out, you can go to you can watch this on YouTube. Also, we have our YouTube channel, and um, we'd love it if you go there and subscribe because once we get over a thousand, YouTube will help us evangel a, a thousand subscribers. YouTube will help us evangelize, and we would we would really love it if you would do that. Uh, but you can see, you can watch this and then share it with your friends, too, so you can be part of our evangelistic outreach. Deacon Ralph, aloha. Aloha. How are you doing today? How are the waves in Steubenville today? Pretty frosty. Thank you. <laughs> Pretty frosty. Uh, Deacon Ralph Poyo has come up with a remarkable new invention that must have gotten inspired at some point uh, in the freezing uh, experience of shoveling snow. Are you going to clue us in on that at all no because i'm gonna probably uh get a uh patent for it and i don't want anybody to steal it so and you are listeners you know they're well they, they're desperate to hear the good news oh well good Jesus okay Christ, we'll be glad to say <laughs> well give me a couple of hints what would be the 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 increase in snow shoveling ability when your invention comes out well, i'll tell you how i discovered it i was uh building an addition onto my house in raleigh and we had this horrific snow and I had not put the uh, ceiling part of the first floor on or, or the second floor. And I got five inches of snow inside all the studs and rough in. And, and so I took a, a sheet of plywood that I just had laying in there and I tilted it up and just pushed <laughs> the large volume of snow throughout the room out of there and it cleared it out super fast. So it has something to do with that nature. How do you get a large board uh, and use it to push the snow instead of just a little, you know, foot and a half wide shovel. And this way, and it's also a way that you can move it without having to kill your back too, which is something I That's really... That's huge. Enjoy. I mean, snow shoveling is a huge cause of back problems and heart attacks. Oh, uh, yeah. I've got about a 40-yard driveway, and I can clear it in about 15 minutes. Okay, so uh, anyone wants to invest in the, uh, the uh, new snow... Uh, shovel plow invention of of Deacon Ralph Poyo. Get ready. Get your checks ready. Hey, but Deacon, uh, it's not. It doesn't involve a flamethrower in any way like that, right? As fun as that sounds, no, it doesn't at all. <laughs> well, we're glad to have you back. We, uh, you know, we have uh, 
uh, a great, you know, I, I love uh, your, your, your call to the diaconate. I love what you do in the area of spiritual warfare. There's this one video of you wearing chains Mm-hmm. And I have this di- desire. Uh, I have this in my in my uh, folder on my computer. Bear Wasnick on chain. I want to do a. I want to do a show like that with with, with EWTN. You know, we have forty minute forty minutes in, in this one hour show. I want to do a podcast format too, so we can just do, talk about anything we want to talk about, and uh, we could do a whole show just on shoveling snow, for example. <laughs> so true. <laughs> anyway, but can, can you start us off? Just give us a little bit of your background and your walk with the Lord, and particularly uh, your call to the diaconate. Sure. Uh, I was, uh, as I shared before, a cradle Catholic. And then um, after I had my conversion experience in high school, just knew that um, I wanted to help other people find what I had missed in my youth. I was looking at churches full of people who were just kind of going through the motions. And so very passionate about joining in ministry and felt called to do youth ministry. So I did that for, um, gosh, 23 years, uh, helping teenagers find the Lord and grow closer to him. And then in the midst of that journey, um, actually was um, in the midst of while being a youth minister and coming out of an addiction to porn that I was utilizing the weapons of the church, the sacraments. And I started going to daily mass and at daily mass a particular time uh, at the elevation, you know, when the priest holds up the hopes after he says the words of consecration for two weeks solid, I just kept hearing, come be my deacon. And you know, I, I, I got to tell you, Deacon Ralph, my dad and I were talking two days ago and he was reminding me of his call to the diaconate. Identical. Oh, really? He would How? become. He would begin to weep, and then, at the elevation of the host, he would say, "I want you to serve me as a deacon." Wow. As clear as could be. Makes yeah. me almost want to cry, man. It's, it's so beautiful. For me, it was about two weeks. It was two weeks worth of hearing every day, "Come be my deacon." And two then I... weeks. Two weeks is exactly what my dad said. Really? That's yes. how. It is. That's crazy. Well, for me, it was. Um, we had no diaconate in our in our diocese. And I said, "Well, Lord, I hear, you, but there's no diaconate program." And six months later, the Lord established, you know, started the diaconate program, and I was about one of 210 men who applied for the first round, uh, from which they took 40 aspirants and then took 13, 14 candidates out of the 40. You know, I, then, I've sat in mass and said, "Okay, Lord, I'm ready. Call me to be a deacon," but the call yeah. never came. No. Because it's a calling, it's a unique invitation to that. Yeah. And you know, it's beautiful because in the Bible it talks about the the deacons, I believe in the book of Revelations, you know, there's a special place in the heart of God for deacons. And so it, it just, it's just, it makes me just choke up inside to hear mm-hmm. this beautiful calling, very special, unique calling that God's given you. Yeah, it was neat. What was the formation like for you? Uh, challenging because uh, at that point I still had a, a family that my kids were somewhat young, but also in their teens. So I had plenty of family life going on and then also full time job. And then on Wednesday evenings and weekends, we were out doing formation, you know, studying. And then when you're not doing that, you're reading. And that's probably was the greatest challenge because you work a full day and then you got to go home and read an hour, hour and a half of stuff uh, that just, uh, it became challenging. But, you know, if you're not studying for it, preparing for the diaconate, you're typically out there doing the work of a deacon anyway. So Exactly. And your wife uh, shared this formation process with you. She did, as as she could, yeah. So sometimes she couldn't because the kids were sick or something like that and couldn't do it. But uh, she came as, as frequently as she could. I could tell you in watching my father, he was a professional speaker. He had a pretty good-sized ego that comes with the ability to be able to do that, you know. Uh, he, he had had he, we all had experienced the renewal in the Catholic charismatic renewal in the early seventies, oh, and I yeah. saw him so in love with Jesus. But in the formation process, I saw two things in him: a humility just settled in his heart, mm-hmm. and he fell in love with the church. Nice. He had a love for the Lord, but he fell in love with the church. Beautiful. And so I saw the formation in him as a man in his spiritual soul, uh, mm-hmm. but I saw this love 
for the church. I didn't understand that. We're talking with Deacon Ralph Poyo, um, who is an expert snow shoveler <laughs> living in uh, the, more of the tropical part of Steubenville, Ohio, there at uh, Franciscan University. I, I love Steubenville because uh, it's not a town you pass through. You kind of have to want to go there. And there's not a lot going on. It's an old steel mining town. But it reminds me of a, it's a cloistered environment where you go there for one reason, and that's just to seek and to do God's will. We need to invite everybody to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and please sign up for our newsletter. Because if you get that, you will get, you know, on Saturday mornings, we send out a, a newsletter, uh, and you get a copy, a YouTube version of the radio show that will be airing that night. So go to deepadventure.com and sign up for our, our newsletter. It means a lot to us if you do that. And also, by the way, if you want to help support the ministry, there's little buttons there you can push that'll help you do that too. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite everybody to uh, to go to uh, iTunes or Google Play, or uh, which is uh, also YouTube, uh, or Amazon Prime Video, our, our reality TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, our motorcycle TV show is airing again on EWTN, season one, and then that will be followed quickly by season two. Uh, so you can watch it on EWTN, but a lot of people, you know, they miss it or they forget to DVR it. So they've seen four of the 10 episodes of season one and they didn't see them in sequence. So why not go to iTunes and uh, go ahead and buy the, buy the, I think the whole season's only like $16. Uh, or you can go to Amazon Prime Video or Google Play, and then that helps support us in our adventure to uh, create the next season. So we want to let you know, though, it's a great way to sit down and power watch Long Ride Home. Wives just kind of you know, put that on in the afternoon, turn the channel from the news over to that, get your sons, get your husbands, get your brother-in-law uh, to watch it. And, and it's a great way uh, for, for like in, over the Easter weekend or something like that for people to gather together and watch it together because it really does challenge, mobilize, equip uh, men in the in a, in a very gritty way. My guest today, Deacon Ralph Poyo, if you could see him, which you can, by the way, if you go to our Bear Wasnick YouTube channel, you can see him. He looks like a tough guy. He looks like a guy that if I had to, if I had to go uh, back to back with someone and, and fight my way out of a dark alley, I would like for him to be there. He's, he's, a, he's, he's a manly man. He's a he, he, you know, how often do you actually meet a man, a real man who has the humility and the desire to serve and to live a life of virtue? And that's what our show calls us to. And that's why we have Deacon Ralph with us, Deacon Ralph Poyo, who lives in Steubenville. Aloha, my friend. Welcome back for this segment. Thank you. There's this striking, by the way, you should have this guy come out and speak to any event you're having, especially men's conferences. He's dynamic. He communicates. Uh, but you have this one video where you're wearing chains around you. Mm -hmm. uh, I, can you just tell us what, why you wear that? What, what the message is behind that when you when you uh, begin to speak to that? Well, my speaking style is is very old school in terms of not using as much of the the you know the media and stuff that's out today. The I prefer to go old school and I like visuals and visuals because help communicate the message and help people remember more. And, you know, the more uh, senses you can use, the better someone retains what you're trying to communicate. And so I use visuals and one of the visuals uh, are the thickest chains I could buy at Lowe's or, or uh, Home Depot or whatever. And, uh, I put them in a, in a, I clasp them together with a little piece of the chain hanging. So it's got a tail to it. So it's a loop with a little chain hanging. And I wear it like gunslingers to wear, wear those belts with the bullets, extra bullets. Uh, and I come out at the beginning of the night in the presentation and I just wear them the whole time. And people see them on me. It's funny because at, at men's conferences, when I do that, I'm sure most of the men look at me and go, oh my gosh, who is this idiot? And what is he doing? But I, I never refer to them. Uh, until the very end of the talk. And at the very end of the talk, um, I come back to them and I refer to them. And I also refer to the men's thoughts they had about me when they first saw me. And uh, and then I said, you know, when I came out here uh, uh, and started talking, I knew I was wearing chains. The question is, did you? Or do you even know what they oh. mean or what they what they, what they they do and, and, and who gave them to you? I said, because uh, we wear these all the time and we don't even know what they what they do. 
But I will tell you this. I said that what they represent is fear and shame, what we got from the Garden of Eden. And I take them back to the story. And when Adam and Eve looked at that, uh, looked at uh, ate the fruit, they looked at each other and felt shame. So they covered up with loincloths. And then as they were finishing getting dressed, they heard the Lord walking and they felt fear of God. And so they hid. And so I said, uh, gentlemen, or uh, to the whole audience, if ladies are there, um, we make most of the decisions of our life based on these two chains. And you notice they have a little tail on them. That's because we're not in control of them. So um, like a, a cowboy uses an electronic cattle prod to move cows. All he has to do is zap them in the butt once, and then those cows move wherever they want to go because they're going to avoid the guy with a stick. And so that's what the demonic does for us. They, they give us the impression of an impending fear or pain and suffering and immediately move in the direction that they're coaxing us to, which is typically away from God and everything good that God wants us to do. So powerful. And I think, you know, it's, it's true. It's men. There are a lot of men that have shame in their lives. Uh, it can be for many reasons. Uh, a lot of it could be just because they're they've locked a lot gotten lost into pornography. Oh yeah, the shame involved there. Sure. Uh, the shame of not being good enough, not measuring up to their dad's expectations. Uh, the shame of uh, failing in a career. You know, so many people find themselves unemployed for no no for no uh, fault of their own. Um, but men do suffer from a lot of shame, and they 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 almost have it so covered up and pushed down so deep that they may not even realize it. Oh yeah. And then of it's, course fear and one of the biggest fears men have is really relating to other men at a visceral level, not about sports and not about politics. Mm-hmm. Not about work. In Hawaii, it's so interesting to me. In Hawaii when when I'm at the when I meet someone at the beach, they don't say, "Hey, hi, I'm so and so. What do you do for a living?" which is a very common thing on the painland. But in Hawaii, it doesn't it comes up. It's just, "Hey, bro, you get some good waves, you know?" So it's about work, it's about politics, it's about, but fear and shame, what do you say, what, what's the healing? How, does, how do we find healing in the, those areas and how do we bring men together? Well, what, I use another great illustration. It's not, I don't think, on a video. I grab a little black box and I talk about you know, the need for us to go to the sacrament of reconciliation and, and how uh, I'm finding in my own little private survey with pastors that in most Catholic churches across the country, the core, that's the 15, 10 to 15% of every Catholic church that does everything, goes to everything, and pays for 75% of everything, the core is utilizing the sacrament of reconciliation somewhere I'd say it's about three to five percent of just that core on a regular basis. And this is beyond uh, uh, the the Lenten and Advent seasons, you know, when they have all these big penance services and they've got two uh, Hispanic priests that don't speak English and everybody goes to them um, to hear their confessions. So and that's because they're just afraid that fear and shame. So I talk about the sacrament as being a place to enter into that. But. And then I go to the men, I turn the corner, I say, maybe you're one of those men who, who, who does go to reconciliation on a regular basis, but I'm still willing to bet you got one of these. And I hold up the little black box. And, um, and I said, well, this is, this is what contains the untouchables. These are the things that, yeah, the untouchables, things that we don't want anybody else to know in our lives, things that we've done that we're ashamed of, things that have been done to us, like me being sexually abused at at a young age. Uh, by a relative. I mean, those are things that we never want anybody else to know. And we spend most of our lives trying to hide it. And I, and I just look at the men, I say, do you got one of these boxes? And if you do, I'm here to tell you that as long as you got one of these, Satan still owns you because you're more committed to keeping the truth in this box than you are to following Christ. Cause Christ always calls us into the light and we are diametrically opposed to getting exposed. So we won't go into the light. And that's why people don't go to reconciliation. And so they, 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 so Satan has permission to be within that little stronghold. Wherever you don't, God doesn't have free reign. Wherever you say yes, God, uh, the kingdom of God is there. But where you keep, where you box God out, that darkness, which is simply just the absence of God, is permission to Satan. And you made the point earlier about the cattle prod. Mm -hmm. When I, as an evangelist, it's not unusual for me when I'm leading someone to that very first encounter with Jesus Christ for a demon to manifest. Uh, It's not normal, but when it happens, 
I have always described that as the cattle prod of, of the Holy Spirit. It's like there's this moment when the Holy Spirit just shows up and the demon goes, ouch, manifests. And then uh, you, I can do as, you know, as a layman, and by virtue of my baptism, I can take spiritual authority over that type of oppression. You know, naturally, in, in, in more serious situations, you bring in the, uh, the priest or, or, or the, the, the diocesan exorcist. But it's not unusual for, I think, especially in this day and age, I was a youth group leader. And I remember I had a youth group of like five or six kids, seven kids. And I just kept saying, you know, you're experiencing the peace of the Lord, but there'll be a, come a time when you encounter the power of God. And soon these seven kids became 60 kids. And that happened over a six week period because they brought their friends and that a lot of them were musicians. They had gotten involved with uh, having an oversoul or some sort of master. It was really a demon to help them advance in their music. And when they would come and have that initial sort of St. Augustine moment, when I prayed with them, often a demon would manifest. And it mm-hmm. wasn't like they were expecting it or ever you know, experienced it. And then that demon would, would, would flee. And then, oh my gosh, and I got to bring my friends. And so there was this moment uh, of six weeks where the group went from six to 60. And it was because of spiritual warfare, the power of, of the Holy Spirit through the authority, which is so important in spiritual warfare, of the church. So I'm going to ask you when we come back, can we dig deeper into uh, spiritual warfare? Sure, absolutely. We're talking with Deacon Ralph Poyo. He's in Steubenville, Ohio, and I'm here in beautiful Waikiki Beach. We'll be right back. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I need to invite you. Uh, Deacon Ralph Ralph Poyo was our guest, and he's mentioning how men uh, experience shame and experience fear. And we have kind of an antidote for that with the, the with Deep Adventure Ministries. We have Bear's Man Cave, uh, which men, it's only for men. You can join by going to deepadventure.com and joining the Man Cave. And in there, it's a secret Facebook group. You can't join by going to Facebook. you got to go to deepadventure.com. And then you're invited to be part of our private Facebook group. And uh, we challenge and share with each other what's really going on in our lives. We encourage each other. We help mobilize each other. We pray for each other. One of our men has been inspired to pray the rosary every night on on, uh, Facebook Live. Another man, uh, Bill Gassaway, uh, is is holding the first time he's ever uh, done a a, a a, given a retreat. He's given a retreat on March 16th. which is probably after this one is before has already taken place, but and several of the men have started their own man caves back on the on the back deck of their porch. They may have gathered men together for some whiskey and cigars, and they talk story reading my book Deep Adventure: The Way of Heroic Virtue. But you can come and be part of this secret Facebook group and contribute and let the walls of Jericho fall, uh, that separate men, and let the walls of Nehemiah be rebuilt as men come together to help and support each other. And the beauty of it is. Tomorrow, uh, we are going to do one of our Zoom video chats every two or three weeks. I just Random nights, random times, I just say, we're going to do a video meetup. And all the men can see each other and talk with each other. We talk story a little bit. We, we, Ken Horn is out there right now. Uh, his challenge the next time we see him is he's supposed to start a new men's, a men, new men's group. And so we're challenging him and encouraging him how to do that in his church. And I always tell him, if you don't have a, a men's group in your church, it's your fault. If you feel the need for it, go do it. God's calling you to do it. So we're just there to to just <clears throat> be brothers, but brothers with a cause. And so please go to deepadventure.com and become a member of the Man Cave. And also we have women that will go there and secretly invite their husbands to join too. So um, we have Deacon Ralph Poyo with us. Deacon, you have a heart uh, for evangelism, and you've worked a lot of your life among the youth, which is a time of great vulnerability to the to to the enemy. Can you tell us, uh, uh, you know, you wear, and you wear this chain around you, you've talked about sometimes when you speak. How do we become unchained? I remember when, when Jesus said to, to uh, when Lazarus was raised from the dead, uh, unbind him, take the burial cloths off of him. How do we help? What, tell us about spiritual warfare. How do we fight that good fight? Well, I, I would first say that in... Um the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, Jesus says that anyone who believes in me will cast out demons in my name. 
So that mantle is really, like you said, through the ministry of your uh, baptism, the anointing of your baptism, we, anybody has authority. If you're connected to Christ and living in the power of the Holy Spirit, you have authority over demons. And so that's a critical piece. But I, I use this uh, illustration again when I was talking about that black box. And I said that the, one of the best ways to begin to to um, be free is to begin to start living the truth and the spirit of the word of God. And so, you know, we're called to confess our sins to one another, but we're still trying to figure out how do you deal with the letter of the law without ever having a, to approach the light that is revealed from the law. And we are created to be men of light, children of God, children of light. And we avoid the light like there's no tomorrow, right? I mean, we avoid it like it, like the plague. We're, why? Because the light exposes us. That's what um, Matthew three nineteen through twenty one tells us, right? We avoid the light of God because we don't want our we don't want to be exposed. And so I'm constantly encouraging men and anyone. I said, you want to begin the freedom, make it a virtue, which is a good habit to start utilizing the sacrament of reconciliation on a consistent basis to deal with the issue of sin. Go into that sacrament and open up your little black box. Open it up in, a, in, in the seal of the confessional where nobody else knows. The priest is not going to say anything. But it's the first time to get that puppy open and break it open. And I, I can't tell you, I've been at men's conferences, and I, I saw this one guy. He sat in, in line for reconciliation. He was the next guy in line. He sat there for 30 minutes waiting for the guy ahead of him to go. And, uh, and I came walking by, and he says, Deacon, Got to tell you, I'm ready. It's been 35 years. I'm ready to open up my little black box. Have you ever opened up, have you ever picked up a piece of plywood? I mean, I know you're into plywood. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, have you ever been in the backyard or something, you pick up a piece of plywood and the cockroaches or whatever just scatter? <laughs> yeah. That's what's yeah. living inside your heart, man. You've got, you're filled with all kinds of vipers and, and, and false accusations are emanating from their shame is emanating from that black box. It's full of cockroaches. Um, and, uh, this church has this beautiful, powerful Weapon. sacrament, and it is spiritual warfare. Because yeah, once fact, you confess a sin, Satan no longer has permission to to be in that that what used to be his stronghold, his little party uh, palace, and uh, and it's it can be the beginning of great healing and liberation. In what other ways do do men need to confront the enemy? Now let's talk about this. What is a demon? A demon is a fallen angel deceived by Satan to rebel against God. And so in, in Revelations chapter 12, um, it talks about the battle, the great spiritual battle between Lucifer, the great serpent, and how his tail swept through a third, through the sky and a third of the angels fell. Those the, a third of the stars fell from the, the earth, or fell from the sky. That's a third of the angels who followed Lucifer, Satan, into rebellion. And so when the battle occurred with St. Michael, it says there they didn't get cast, kicked out of heaven and cast to hell. They were cast down to earth where they're waiting for us. And demons have the ability. There's, there's three levels of inner activity that they can have with us. Well, first of all, they're on the outside of us. That's called oppression. And every one of us has that voice that sits there and, and talks to us and confronts us and, and messes with us. It, it's funny how you... You uh, introduced me as a, a manly man, but I, I joke about being a Hobbit Deacon. You know, my, my Twitter handle is is Hobbit Deacon. How uh, cool, man. That's so awesome. Because my height was a really big deal when I was younger. And mm. so I had that voice that said, see, you're so short, you're not big and buff and all the rest of this stuff. And of course, you know, when God's not part of the equation of your life, everything is based on comparison. You sit there and compare yourself with everyone else. And God is, and we spend no time paying attention to the beautiful things that God created in us. And so that spirit that's outside of us, that demon by the way, uh, demons have the ability to insert thoughts into our mind and insert emotions into our being. And we tend to respond to those, both of those, and we eat it like candy. So they're out there on the outside of us talking. The next thing is we give them opportunity to come inside. For example, for me at 12 years old, staring at a, what was the precursor to a cable box that changed after 10 o'clock into porn. I said, to, I remember sitting there staring, looking at this warbly image. You know, one half of the screen is on one side, the other half is flipped over. Um, and I remember saying, Satan, I'll give you my soul if you'll unscramble this box in my addiction to porn. 
And that opened up the door for the demon of pornography to open up and come in. Every time we would go back, I'd go back, I was being led by a demon of pornography. So I'd given him access to the inside, and which re- later required me to renounce that demon and cast him out. And that uh, would be called what, obsession or what would you call That was you? obsession, right? Obsession, so okay. They now live not outside of you, but they actually live inside of you. Mm-hmm. And, and the next one is the one that people are most aware of, and that's called possession. And the difference between possession and obsession is that by the time a church, the church legally defines someone as possessed, they have thousands of demons living in them, thousands. And so to get them free, it, it's not just that people think, oh, you got the exorcist comes and, and it's a and it's not a one and done. When you've got thousands in there, you need people who do deliverance ministry. That's what you were describing and what I do. You know, we have a take authority over the demons and we kick them out. And so say we kick out 30 or 40 of the little ones and then we get to this dark stronghold, which we can't see because the demon yeah, is because, so strong. Yeah, the, so, the, the big, big mean demon will kick out the little ones and put on a show for you and he's still hiding down there. Exactly. And that's where the exorcist comes, because the exorcist comes requ- and in the name of Christ and his office has the ability to command the demon to say his name, and then he casts him out, and then you see the next level of 30 or 40 demons. And so when you look in, um, when Paul describes, you know, we're not by- fighting flesh and blood, we're talking about powers and principalities and stuff, what Paul is describing is the angelic realm, you know, the choirs of angels, different levels of angels. Well, when they rebelled against God, some of them rebelled in those higher offices. And when they are fallen into the demonic realm, they retain their power and authority over other demons. I think one of the best ways to understand the demonic realm, and we can take a break and come right back, is to read C.S. Lewis' book, Screwtape Letters. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Because he really nails it. Uh, the demonic kingdom is not run by love or a willing heart of a younger demon to serve an older demon. It is, uh, it is run by intimidation and fear and hate and, and greed and a desire for power. Uh, but the beautiful thing is that um, the re- reverse of that is, uh, is to, to submit to God, to submit to the church. Even the Pope is the servant among servants. The key to taking a real authority over a demon is to be a man under authority. We'll come back, talk about that when we return with Deacon Ralph Poyo. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We need to invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com. We have a, a, a website that has, uh, if you click on the, the store, my book, Deep in the Way of a Surfing Guide to the Soul, which was an Amazon bestseller, and my book, Deep Adventure, the Way of Heroic Virtue, that talks about the seven virtues is there. We got manly gear like T-shirts, the kind like that. We got motorcycle patches and pins. We even got our seven virtue cigar sampler, which are Excellent, excellent cigars. Each cigar represents one of the virtues. There's an image of a Renaissance painting of the woman that represents that virtue. And when you peel it off, and you have to because you really can't enjoy the full cigar without doing that, you can easily peel it off. And inside is a quote from one of my books on that particular virtue. So the idea is sit down with a buddy of yours, say, hey, I got a cigar. I want cigars I'd like to share with you. And you may give him the virtue of Coraggio. Uh, courage, which would that would be a uh, a milder blend, or you might give him the Maduro, one of the theological virtues of faith, hope, and love. We're talking with Deacon Ralph Poyo, uh, Deacon, the 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 man, the centurion, who's a big kind of a big deal in Rome, right? He's over a hundred men. He says to Jesus, "Come and heal my servant." And he, Jesus said, "I'm on my way I'll, right now." And he goes, "No, but it's not necessary that you enter under my roof. Only speak but the word." And my servant will be healed because I am a man under authority. I say to one come and he comes, another one goes and he goes. So he's under authority. And because of that, his men respect him and do what he asked them to do. Uh, I'm a man under authority. And Jesus said something very profound. Lo, I have not seen such great faith in all of Israel. This was a Gentile. And so when we are, uh, as men and the leaders of our home, we need to be under authority, the authority of the church. And then by, by living that, by bringing holy water or salt into our home, praying over our children, making the sign of the cross of holy water uh, at night and over our spouses, uh, we take authority. But we don't take it in some presumptuous way. We take it because we're under authority. Can you talk about the whole nature of authority in relationship to dealing with the demonic world? Well, it's, it's pretty interesting that you note that a, a rebellious man— uh, never commands authority in the kingdom of God. 
In fact, the Bible says rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft in the Old Testament someplace. It yeah. opens us up to the demonic world. Yeah, so they're very legalistic, demons are. And so you have to either identify them. What we do in deliverance ministry is we identify them by their activities um, and or otherwise by their name, but they're not prepared to give you their name, and that's where the exorcist comes in. Um, so they they understand it, right? I, I love um, – Oh, I forget which one of the epistles it says it. I, I think it might be James um, that talks about whether or not you really. Uh, yeah, I think it is where you whether you say you believe. Well, so do the demons and shudder. Uh, they shudder because they know that Christ is true. They they shudder because they know, and, and it's exemplified in the Gospels, right? Jesus comes walking by and they start screaming and screeching, and we see that today again, right? Uh, I remember at a studentville conference watching um, students, teenagers who were manifesting because they were filled with some demons, a couple, a handful of demons. They were manifesting a demon. And they, yes, as the Eucharistic Lord was walking by. And you saw that in uh, when Paul dealt with that one woman who was saying, follow these men, they will show you the, the way to, to God. And it says that, that, that Paul fixed his gaze on her and cast out what I would call would be a religious spirit. The thing is, is in a, in a demonic setting, uh, e e demons will want to talk, mm -hmm. and they'll try to change the subject, and they'll talk about everything and anything except for what is your name or, or what's your stronghold, which is, would be like pornography or something like that. And Jesus' response was basically, gag yourself, be silent, but literally more like, gag yourself. We don't need to focus on the demons so much as, as, as the Holy Spirit's silence them, find out who they are, why they're, what legal right they have to be there, bind them and cast them out. But let's get a little bit more uh, basic. I want to talk about a father in his home. Okay. What type of spiritual authority does he need to, can he, what, what does he have as a, his weapons there? In the home? Yeah, how does he take spiritual charge of his home? Well, the first part is he's got to have a faith, right? He's got to have authentic faith. You know, he can't be playing the game of church. Demons know very quickly whether or not someone is actually exercising authentic faith in the Lord. They can see it. It's it's not something where, um, you know, we go to church, we put our best Catholic church face on, and then we're living like a hellion throughout Hold, the rest. Holding of to the form of religion and denying its power. Exactly. Well, that's and where that's they the, hide. Yep. So they sit there and they just go around and play. But the truth is, at home is. Uh, it, it, you know, like I've got this sign that says, if Jesus isn't in your home or in your work, you have no one to blame but you because you haven't brought him there. And so a man who lives with Christ takes him everywhere. And home should be the first place he goes because that's where he takes the battle armor off. He should be, Christ should be in his home. He should, that should be his place. He should have a place in his house where he is utilizing the fundamental disciplines of a disciple, where he's doing daily prayer, daily you're, scripture. You're saying study. there should be a place, oh, yeah. kind of a holy place, a, a place of habit like any virtue, where yeah. that's his time. He has a time and a place where he sits. Yep. In my case, I walk the beach. Yeah. Uh, I also that, have my long time of sitting at the beach and reading too, but it needs to be habitual. It needs to be a pattern. It needs to be lived. As a disciple, I, I tell my disciples, I said, one of the greatest deaths of a disciple in following Christ, you know, pick up your cross and follow me, is to get in the chair or to get on the beach. Awesome. Right? Get in the chair, sit down, and be quiet and wait upon the Lord and learn to listen. And it's one of the hardest deaths to die because, you know, look at the world today. We're getting so trained on technology and everything else that we can't even sit still and, and think and pray and meditate. On a particular passage or a thought, we got to mm -hmm. occupy our time because now we don't like to suffer boredom. So we avoid all of those things. We turn the TV on. We have ambient noise or some kind of music playing in the background a lot of times because our own stuff, our brokenness, that stuff in the little black box is talking to us. And so we can't even be still anymore. And yet – when you go at home, like I always tell the men, I was this weekend, I was in San Francisco and I was um, doing a men's conference I, and I shared with them, I said, gentlemen, listen, faith, authentic faith in Jesus Christ, where one grows to trust in him is much more caught than it is taught mm -hmm. in the home. Our kids catch us praying. They catch us studying the word of God. And then when they ask us what, those are the teachable moments. Why, dad? Why, what are you doing here? I'm talking with Jesus. Why? Because he's my best friend. 
Why are we going to church? I need to go to church. Why? Because this is where you go to get trained as a man of God. This world will not train you to do that. And son or daughter, you need to know that Jesus is by far the most important relationship of my life. He is the greatest love of my heart. I love him more than your mom. I love him more than your siblings or you. Why? Because he's everything. If you lose me to death and I died, son, you'd lose a father. If you lose God, you lose everything. Everything. And so he has to be first at home. Well, my wife knows uh, if she comes home and I'm not here and it's about sunset, I'm at the beach with my best friends, Augustin Aquinas, <laughs> uh, Stephen Ray. You know what I'm talking about. I'm there yeah. with, my, with the early church fathers. I'm there with my friends. And uh, people will text me, say, hey, what are you up to? And I'll go, well, I'm, I'm hanging out on the beach with, beach with some friends. Really? Who's there? Maybe I'll come down. Augustine. <laughs> you know. um, there is a pattern. Uh, a disciple needs that pattern. And it, 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 I always say, if you're a man and you don't get up a half hour, at least a half hour, you should be praying an hour every day minimum anyway. But if you're a man and you don't get up a half hour early to slay dragons, you've already put your family in harm's way. Your mm-hmm. children need to know, hey, dad's up early. They kind of hear that little noise that you're, you're at your, your, your secret spot. And you're, the thing is, is, and people think, men think, well, you know, I got to get to work. The liturgy of the hours, every deacon prays it. My dad taught me to. I pray most of the liturgy every day. It means the work of the people. If you're a man and you want to work, that's your work. Do a uh, pray, give, seek the Lord, meditate. And guess what? You're going to find out. It's just like I took out uh, Christian Okoya, the famous Nigerian nightmare, the running back, fullback for the Chiefs. I took him out surfing uh, after he was already in the Hall of Fame. And I go, how do you stay in such good shape? He says, because every morning I have an appointment at the gym for an hour. And everyone knows, don't mess with my time. We need to schedule that hour. And if we do, we will grow strong. And God will give us our marching orders. And the things of the day that would distract us don't distract us anymore because we've had our time of being with God. And then it seems like sometimes, Deacon, Ralph, you know, three in the afternoon, some you're talking with someone, you got the answer, you got it that morning in prayer. Mm-hmm. Deacon, how can people find you to invite you to come speak? You can go to my website, nem.training, that's N-E-M dot training. And, uh, just what does that stand for, N-E-M? What is that? New Evangelization Ministries. Love that. Any so, what is the website again? Nem dot training. Just that's it. Not dot com. Not dot org. It's dot training. Nem dot training. Nem dot training. If you guy, if you don't get at least, I hope you get several phone calls as a result of this radio. I love this man. He's been very good to me. Been patient with with some technical issues that we had, and he's ready to be. He is a warrior for the Lord. And uh, so invite him to come out and spend time uh, with your at your conference or speak with you. This is Bear Wozniak. Until next week, you know, we like to say on the long ride home, Viva Cristo Rey, long live Christ the King. Can I say that and you respond in that? Viva yeah. Cristo Rey. Long live Christ the King. Long live Christ the King. Amen. Thank you, Ralph, very much for your time. Talk to you guys next week. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha. You've been listening to The Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10-episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com. 